So you can see uh, it, it already has some default syntax, uh, default codes here, right? One is called what we call what? setup, right? This is called setup. Can you see it clearly? So uh, I need a magnifier. Uh, let me get the magnifier. variables we need some uh, some text definition right? let's say we find an integer type right integer for the LED right so let's say we put it as a LED equals eight right? so what is, what is this uh, this means basically now I define a new variable right this new variable name we call it LED right? this one you can you can use a different name right? LED one LED two whatever right? my LED so, so as long as you, as you give a, re, a reasonable, reasonable name for this variable. Okay, and uh, we say uh, you need to end up with the uh, semicolon. That's the C syntax. So for, for Arduino, right, actually we follow mostly like a C. <coughs> so, so this line basically tells you I have a integer variable called LED. The value of it is A. It's a sign number A to A time. Okay. Okay, in a in a setup we use one function, right? Which is uh, which is uh, from the uh, this ID, right? We call it in mode. Right? So you see, this is existing functions inside the ID. So you see, uh, if I type correctly, right, it will change color. Right? That means this is uh, the correct function name. Okay. And uh, uh, last time we already discussed that right, for C syntax is uh, case sensitive. That means the small letter and capital letter they are different. Case sensitive. Okay. So for it, for this case, uh, let's say I put a in mode right, as a all small letter. Right? Okay. You see the color is not changed. <coughs> color. Uh, this is not the correct function name. Right? So I need to put a pin mode, uh, M is a capital letter, right? so that the ID recognizes it's the correct function. Okay? So pin mode now, I want to define it in my pin mode, this pin, right? Number 8, right? as we output. So again, if I put a small, small letter, right?
because for the, for the uh, for all the things, uh, just now you see uh, in the board, right? It's I O, right? It can be input or output, so you have to define whether you want it to be input or output. So for this case, I define it, uh, this uh, thing last eight right? LED and output. Okay, then come here. So we, now we can go through this uh, loop, right? Just now we say. Anything inside the loop, right? This is the code you are going to run uh, continuously, right? Okay, so because uh, this pin is an integer pin, right? So we use this function. So again, this is an existing function, right? We call it digital write. We want to write value to this pin. We want to write a value to this pin. So again, if I use a digital write here, right? So all small letters, you see the color is still black, right? Let me this function is it's not a recognized function. Okay. The reason why is because for uh, the correct function and w need to be I write a, a digit, I use digital right to this pin, right? Right. So I basically this one what it means is I I, I, I want to assign a high voltage. So again, high need to be capital letter. So you see the color change. Okay. So if I do this, right, now the pin will have high voltage. Okay. Then, uh, so today I'm going to what I'm going to do is I want to do a control uh, to the uh, LED. I want to make it. Okay, so now my uh, 
Ça n'est pas c'est vrai que ça n'est pas
Okay. So the first two lines, because it starts with a double slash, is a comment line. Okay. And uh, this one, it basically initializes a new file from not LA. So it's not we have to discuss, right? Okay. So uh, inside the setup function, inside the setup function, right? Uh, okay, the first line is a comment line, double slash. So it says uh, I want to initialize the Google pin as an output. Uh, this is the user comment. So here you use the, the function of default. Right? So default is, uh, is a function from the ID. Okay? And uh, again, uh, I put emphasize uh, because this is a piece sensitive. Right? So, so the mode is M, right? Put it in the letter. Otherwise, uh, the compiler or the microcode will not recognize. So this is case sensitive, right? Okay. So inside the loop, right? Basically, we have discussed anything with within the loop, right? Will be executed continuously. Just now you have already seen, right? Right. Like basically, if I don't stop, right? The LED basically just keep printing, print, print, right? Non stop. If I don't take, take out the power, right? You, you, you let it run one hour, two hour, one day, two day, right? It will still run it because they are inside the loop function. These codes are inside the loop function. What is inside the loop function basically it will, will run continuously, non stop, infinite. It's an infinite loop. Okay? Okay, so what is inside loop? Basically, just now we also discussed, we use this uh, digital write function. Right? Again, W is the capital letter. Okay, so you use the digital write function first to set the, to turn on the LED. Uh, you, you delay for one, one second, and then you turn it off and delay for another one second. Right? So the, uh, the LED will uh, turn off one second, turn off one second, turn off one second. Okay, then, uh, then uh, we, we have uh, discussed also, right, the name actually is very important because it helps you to understand what the program is going, uh, going on, right? So, for example, like a variable name, right, you, you need to choose a proper name. Of course, I mean, just now, you see the LED, right? I say, INT integer, right, LED equals A, right? So, you, you can say, okay, my L, I, don't, I don't want to use the variable name as LED, you want to use uh, LX3, yeah, of course you can. Right? It's allowed. Right? But if you put X3, right, basically it doesn't give you a meaning. Right? Yeah, you can use any identifier, X3, Y4, anything. Right? But, but of course, I mean, for this thing, you need to have some reasonable name. Right? Because when you read it, right, you will understand. Okay? And also, for some like, function name, right? Function, I say, uh, this uh, digital is actually is a name given by the uh, other ID. Right? And when, but when they design this ID, they, of course they think it's a given name, right? It's one, and they say, yeah, it's possible. Right? Again, it's very, very, it's very difficult for you, for users to use, right? right? If you look at, if, if, you, if you use a function name as a digital, right? Actually, from the function name itself, you know, you understand what is the function is going to do, right? It's, it's a digital right, right? It's going to write a digital, uh, it's going to write something to the digital I.O. Right? right? So digital write. So this, this thing is a very meaningful thing. Right? Yeah. yeah? Okay, so again, uh, this is a good, pra a good pro programming practice right? to, use, to, have, to use a good names for your functions, for your variables, etc. Okay? Okay, so uh, so for the, uh, the the program we we have discussed uh, uh, just now, right? To make the LED print, yeah. So you will see, uh, you you have seen uh, this this thing, right? So what is the uh, sketch template look like? Right? Sketch template this is the program look like, right? Yeah. So how do you find a variable? How do you use the standard function from the ID? Right? And uh, and the, the code itself, right? You, you want to make it as a self-document. Right? So, so we call it self-document. Basically, when you read the program, you, 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 you can understand right, what's going on. Okay, 
So this is the first program we have learned, right? For the uh, uh, for the Arduino. So next, uh, let me go through uh, the input. Right? Just now we discussed the output. Right? <coughs> so the output, just now we say, output basically is uh, some things like the microcontroller and in, right? So if it's a digital output, so so basically the the, the Arduino board, right? The, the microcontroller can give uh, zero or one to its pin. That's the output, right? But what is input? So input basically is from outside, right? Can be from user, right? The common input is this one. If you have a switch, right? This one you're going to use in the lab, right? Let's say you have a switch, then you press, press the switch, right? Right, actually, you can give the input to the microcontroller. Right? You can press the switch. That means you want to turn on switch or turn off the switch. Right? Then once this uh, switch is connected to the the, the, the box, right, actually you are giving the input to the microcontroller. That's the input. Right? Of course, I mean this input can come from other uh, other parts. Right? Okay? Not only from the users. Other uh, device, uh, etc. So, how can we uh, connect to uh, the input? Right. So the simplest one is uh, let's say you have a uh, two voltage outside. Right? One is VDD, one is VHS. Right? This is the simplest one. Right? And uh, this one basically is the the pin, the input pin from the microcontroller. So the simplest one basically you see you 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 have a switch, right? It's a toggle, right? So if you uh, if you connect to a VDD, if you connect this input pin to the sorry, if you connect this switch if input pin to VSS, then you give a low voltage to the microcontroller, right? So if you connect up to VDD, you will give a high voltage to the microcontroller, right? That's it, right? So basically this part, uh, this part is your Input is outside, right? Outside the uh, microcontroller, right? So through the switch, you can give the input to the microcontroller. That's the input, right? But, but there is one question now, right? Sorry? <laughs> what is the question? Okay, so now uh, there is a uh, one question, one issue now, right? If this switch, right, is floating, right? It doesn't connect to VDD or it doesn't connect to VS, VSS, right? So what's, what's going on? So basically this switch is floating. If it's floating, right, so what is the input? So, the, so this state, actually we call it this uh, undefined. Because you don't know. Right? It's undefined. It's unsure. Right? It can be VDD, it can be VSS, or it can be anything. Right? Because it's floating. Right? Right? So for, this, for this kind of situation, actually, we, 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 we try to avoid. Right? Because the input state are, right? basically, it's undefined. Right? We, 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 we want to avoid this kind of uncertainty, right? okay? So what we are going to do is, we want to avoid this kind of uncertainty. What we are going to do is, we want to use uh, what we call is called pull-up system. Pull-up system. So you can see, uh, you can see uh, the configuration here, right? You have uh, additional resistors which is uh, connected to VDD. Okay, so this resistor we call it pull up resistor. So I will show you uh, what uh, what's going on here, right? So so this resistor, the value of this resistor is about ten kilo ohm. It's about ten kilo. Okay, 
Then we have only one switch here, right? Which is here, uh, which is con uh, connect to a v VSS, and the lead, this point is connect to an input pin of the uh, of the microcontroller. Okay. So what happened is this one, right? So if this push button, right, is pushed, right? So that means this point is shorted to this point, right? So that means my with my ground actually is connected to the input of the microcontroller. So that means uh, when this push button is pushed, my input is low. Okay. Now, if my switch is open. If my switch is open, so what's going on? My input now is always VDD, right? Yeah, it's always with VDD. So for this case, right, you see, what's the, what is the difference between this one and uh, this one? Right, this one actually you have two switches, right? right? One is here and one is here, right? Basically, it's a toggle switch, right? Right. You have two switches, right? So if you move to here, it's VDD. Move to here, it's uh, VSS. Right? But for this case, you actually have only one switch. Only one switch. When this switch is closed, the input is ground. Right? When it's open, it's always VDD. Only one switch. So what is the advantage of this thing, right? What is the advantage of this one? So for this case, right, we don't have the inputs, right, which is undefined, right. So you see, when my switch is open, right, it's it's always VDD. Right? When it's closed, it's always ground, right. So there is no undefined state for this case, right. And implementation is much easier because I only need one switch. Right? If you compare to the earlier case, right. You will see the difference. Okay? Yeah? You will see the difference. Is it, is it okay? Yeah, for this case, actually, you have uh, two switches, right? And you have one in one undefined switch, right? For this case, yeah, we only have one switch, no undefined state. Okay? And when the switch is, is not closed, Right, it's not closed. The input is always VDD, right? Because we have this uh, pull-out resistor here. Okay, so this is uh, what we have in inside the Arduino board, right? Okay, we have always have the pull-out resistors. Okay, and uh, the input for this case, right? We call it active load. Right? Why is that? Because when the switch is closed, the input is ground. When the switch is open, the input is VDD. Right? Yeah. You press the switch. Okay, you, you see why it's active flow, right? By right, right? When you press switch, right, you, I mean, for our conventional thinking, right, the normal thinking, right, when you press the switch, you want to turn on something, right? Right. And when you release the switch, right, you don't press. You want to turn off something, right? Yeah, that, that's normal thinking. But for this case, right? If you press, actually, the input is ground. Right? It's a bit reverse, right? So this configuration, again, we call it active load. Right? Because the load, uh, when the switch is closed, it goes from the load 1 to 0. Right? Reverse. OK. So what, again, okay, so we have discussed, right? So this configuration is really much better than the earlier one, right? But now, what is the disadvantage? It cannot be, everything is good, right? Yeah. But what is the disadvantage? The disadvantage is uh, you have some wasted current right? through these two R resistors from VDD to ground, right? And because when the switch is, uh, when the switch is, uh, 
呃 open by this pin, the input is always connected with it. Okay? And uh, when it's closed, right, you have some wasted current, right? Can you see it? When the switch is closed, right, your VDD, you will have current flow from VDD to VSS, right? Can you see it? Ah. Yeah, this, this current actually is wasted, right? And how much is this current? Let's say VDD is 3 volt, right? Just now we say the resistor here is about 10 kilo ohms, right? So how much current will flow through this resistor? This is 3 volt divided by 10 kilo ohms, right? So how much? 3 divided by 10 kilo ohms is about 0.3 milliamp. So 0.3 milliamp will be wasted through this power resistor. Yeah? Ohm's law, you remember, right? Ohm's law, although you are not an electrical engineering student, but Ohm's law is the basic law. You, you have to have some idea, right? V equals uh, I come down. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when if I tell you, right, I really need this 3 volt, right? My resistor is so, uh, 10 kilo ohms, right? And you need to, you know, power flow. Yeah? So although you are not an electrical engineering student, but at least you are it's, uh, still the basic. So basically, the disadvantage for this com uh, configuration, right? So you will have some wasted current through this uh, flowers. Okay. Uh, again, this one it has a, a different number, right? Uh, here it asks you if a typical supply current is three volt and power resistor is fifty kilo ohm. Just now actually we, we say the ten kilo ohm. Right? So how much? Uh, current is wasted, right? And uh, so if it's 3 volt, okay, let me show you again. So it's, if it's a 3 volt, so if it's 3 volt, right, divide by 50. So this one gives you how much current? So basically this is medium, right? Because it's K, right? So it's medium. So 3 divided by 50 is how much? 0 0.06, right? 0.06, right? So just now we say, uh, what is the output current from the, the pin. What is the typical output current from the, the individual pin? It's about how much? Do you remember? Three, uh, three million. Right? So this one actually if you compare to three million, it's still much, much smaller right, than three million. Right? Almost like a hundred times smaller, right? fifty times. Okay. So so that means uh, the waste current actually is not it's not very significant compared to the operating part you know, effect from the thing. Okay, and just now we we said for a power resistor, right? Actually, the configuration we call it is actually active load. Right? It's an active load configuration, and. It, it actually is possible to make an active high input uh, configuration, right? We, we system, we call it pull down resistor, right? It's possible, right? To make it reverse. But, uh, but these days, right, the pull down resistor is uh, standard, right? Okay. And again, in Arduino, right, we always use pull down resistor. We don't use the pull down you, you can uh, do it uh, uh, do it uh, the other way to make it active high. Again, it's an easy uh, configuration. Right? Uh, but this is uh, what is uh, standard. Uh, partly it's because uh, it's usually easier to find the connection to run right? near the switch.
Okay, and uh, and uh, uh, this kind of this configuration because it's so widely used, right? And uh, the microcontroller these days are usually they have a built-in, uh, they have internal flood resistance. Okay. And uh, in this case, right? So uh, for, for our user, right? So now it's actually much easier, right? We don't need to connect a power resistor right, to everything right? because now this power resistor already built in this idea. So for for example, this one, right? If it's a microcontroller, just now you see, right? Yeah. So the power resistor already inside. Right? You don't need to connect anymore from outside, right? So what you what you need to do is you just need to connect a switch. That's all. Yeah, the switch if one would control this uh this pin, right? So the user just need to connect a switch. Like, no, no need to, uh, no need to put a power resistor. Okay. And uh, what you need to do is just you need to define this pin right, to be um, what we call input one. So I want to define this pin as an input pin, right? As an input pin, but with the power resistor. Right. Right. So. So you can see actually it, it simplified a lot right, for all users, right? right? Okay? So pinball, this one you see just now, right? right? Pinball is a uh, this function. I right? just uh, declare this whether it's a uh, output or input. Uh, but for the input for this case, you will put a input for uh, right? Means well, this is an input thing I uh, in the flow system. Again, okay? it's a uh, you look at the the uh, uh, please, right? Yeah, this is all should be capital and Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, this one I, I will uh, discuss a little bit. Uh, what is for switch bus, right? Switch bus basically for the uh, for the inputs, right? The ideal inputs is this one, right? So when the input when when the switch is, is not closed, right? Not just now I say it's active low, right? When it's not closed, so the input is high, right? Right? Because it's uh, you have the power resistor, right? So the input is always high. So now when you close the switch, you press the switch, so now my input actually is zero, right? So the idea is you want to have a curve like this one. So this actually is a perfect curve, right? Perfect, perfect switch curve, right? So you, you change from high to low, then you open it, you, you change from low to high. Then you have a perfect uh, square curve like this one. Okay, but what actually happened is when you close the switch, right? The transition point actually you will see a lot of noise. What we call is a is a is a switch bump. So you will see a lot of noise before it settles to to low. Right? Again, when you open the switch, right? Again, you you will see a lot of noise right? before it settles to high. Right? So this part, this part, right? Uh, it, it will actually it will cause uh, some 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 of problems, right? Because if you, you see what, what kind of problem you 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 will see, you will foresee. So one one is uh, let's say if this uh, switch right, is too noisy, right? It will shoot shoot up to high again before it coming down, come come coming down to zero. Right? So this noise actually, if you don't handle it properly, right? So your circuit may be 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 talk. Okay, my input now is high again, right? Do, do, do you see the point? Yeah. So if you have to manage this kind of noise, right? otherwise, uh, because your input now, right? You want it to be low, right? But because of the noise, at some point, right? That your input will dip. It becomes high, and because of the noise. Right? So, 
So for this part, right, you want to eliminate the, the switch part. Okay? Because this part is not useful, right? We don't need this one. Uh, but it will cause some problems right? you don't, if, if you don't handle it properly. Okay? Again, for this part also, right? It's a noise. Right? You have to uh, you have to eliminate uh, this part, right? So how to eliminate uh, this uh, switch bounce, right? You can do it by uh, external extra uh, components, right? Or you can handle uh, the program itself. Uh, this one we'll discuss uh, more detail later. Right? So you, you can actually... So, so, uh, so the typical settling time is 50 milliseconds, right? Then how do you handle, let's say you, you handle by software? Right? How do you handle by so software? Right? So if you know the sampling time is 30 seconds, right? So basically from the software point of view, right? Basically what, what you can do, basically is uh, if you have a, uh, this kind of sw uh, switch, uh, the, 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 the change in the input, right? You have to tell the bank controller to wait for 50 milliseconds, right? Before you play the game. And you can put uh, some delays, right? When you have a change in the uh, inputs, right? That's the simple, simplest way, right? Okay? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, you can you can uh, program. Uh, you can change your program in such a way, right? Okay. You can introduce some delay right? when there is a input, input switch. Right? So basically, you, you want to know the transition paths. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's what we have uh, discussed uh, today, and uh, we we have uh, uh, we have discussed how to drive the LED, right? how to drive the LED. So the LED basically uh, can can illuminate right when the output is one, right when uh, it will turn off when it's zero, right. So basically, LED is a diode, right? Okay, the diode. When the, the, the output is high, it will turn on. You have power flow, it will turn on. Right? If it's zero, no power flow, it's turn off. Okay, and the LED is a diode, just remember. So the direction it matters. Right? You connect this way and this way, they are different. Right? Okay, and uh, you need a series uh, resistor to limit the current. Okay. So we we, we 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 have discussed right. So the total voltage for the diode, the LED, right, is about two volts, right? and the uh, current to so have a reasonable uh, brightness is about three milliamps. Right? So you need to have some a series system to limit current. Okay. So if you want to drive the heavy loads, right, for example, heaters, motors, etc., right, you need power supplies. And uh, we have uh, discussed the how to control the output of the microcontroller, right? How to control the output, right? Basically, you can use the digital right to set the output voltage of the pin to be low or high, so that you can control the LED, right? To be on and off, right? Output. And uh, we also discussed the inputs, right? So, for the inputs, we can use, for example, the simplest uh, input is a push button. Of course, you can, you can have other inputs, which we will discuss much later. Right? And then you can use your push button as the input, right? So, basically, what, what, what is the main input? Uh, what does the input mean? Mean, means? what? The input basically is coming from the user or from the external, right? So, when you have a push button, you, when you use a push, or release the push button, right? So it will tell the, uh, so the microcontroller can receive these inputs and it will understand, uh, it will know what to do, right? So that's the, the inputs, or you can say it's the instructions from the users, okay? So for these inputs, right, it can be active high or active low, right? We have discussed, if you, you use a pull up resistor, actually it's an active low configuration, right? Because when you, Close the switch, the input is low. When you open the switch, the input is high. So this is active low configuration. And uh, 
and the poor resistor basically you are, it will make your inputs right well defined. You don't have those undefined states. And we also discussed the switch bound, right? So you want to avoid the switch bound. So to avoid switch bound, the easiest way you can program is you can create a program to introduce some delay. Okay, and um, that's all about today. Yeah. Uh, do you have any questions?